Hello, welcome to my second channel. It's probably going to be a little bit more casual, more in-depth, longer videos, less cinematics, less music. I just want to have somewhere that I can be more uh, technical and go more in-depth about stuff. Today I'll be just going through what's on my computer, how do I make cinematics in Blender, what programs do I use, in my daily work. So I'm recording this in December 2022 and it will probably be posted in January 2023. So I guess this is what was on my computer. Anyways, let's just first do like basic Windows 10 stuff and then I'll just go into what programs I'm using. So I'm currently using Windows 10 on this computer. On my other computer, I'm using Windows 11 and I like Windows 11 a lot more, but I just haven't switched yet. This is my desktop. I like to have it gray. If I have a wallpaper that has any form of texture or color, I feel like that is impacting my work. So if I have a cold wallpaper, like a blue color, my work tend to be warmer in color. I have no idea why. I read somewhere that Lego have these super white rooms to just make the creativity not be influenced by anything else. I set it to custom color and then 18% gray. One thing that I think is really important is to hide your taskbar because the information on the taskbar is not something you need all the time, right? So. I just really like to hide it and then keep it compact. And these hotkeys will still work. So if I want to open Blender, this is number three, you can just press Windows 3 and it will just open Blender. And then I have DaVinci Resolve number four. I'm not going to start that yet because that's going to take a while. And then this amazing software, Screen to GIF. This is the best tool ever. If you want to make like, let me show you. You can do a record and this countdown and then I'm just doing this kind of stuff. Uh, oop, ba -da -ba -oop, and then stop. You can save this as a GIF super easily. Just go file, save as. If you want to make short GIFs for your Blender Market product page or Gumroad, I don't know, it's it's a or website, it's, a, it's an amazing program. And then I also have Video Enhance AI. That's a recent addition. I started using that a couple of weeks ago, but I really like it. And one more thing that I always use, let me show you. Let me just open this folder here. So here we have a folder. And now if you go Control Windows D, I think, you will make a new desktop and you can press Windows Tab you just see, you see I have a lot of desktops. What's really cool is that you can swap between these desktops really fast by going control windows right or left. So let's say you have Blender on this one and then you just boom and then you're here, right? And here is the big brain move. I have this computer mouse, uh, this one, Logitech G502 Hero. I don't have an autofocus lens, unfortunately, but this mouse has two extra buttons. So I have remapped these buttons to just be control windows left and right. So now I can use my computer mouse to go back and forth. And this mouse also have this sniper button. So I have remapped this sniper button to um, windows tab. So instead of pressing windows tab, where you get up this menu, you can just press this sniper button, boom. I'm not trying to sell you this mouse. I'm just saying it's really nice to have a mouse with some more keys or some more buttons, I mean. And on Windows 11, by the way, this is even better because then you don't have this animation. So on Windows 11, you can just click one of the left or right button and it just instantly swaps. One more thing, um, mouse settings, go to additional mouse options and you want to turn off pointer precision. It's a big brain gamer move if you just want to be more precise when using your computer mouse. It's actually ridiculous that it's not the default setting. Your mouse will not move faster depending on how fast you move it. So you can actually get some muscle memory going on, which is really nice. So that's my basic Windows 10 setup where I navigate and use stuff in Windows. Now let's go through my Blender workflow, which is from Blender to DaVinci Resolve with some Soundly stuff. And then I'm also using DJV along the way to preview EXR. So let's open up Blender where I do all my 3D animation. And let's have a look at my default startup file. In the preferences, you can see that I have the interface set to 1.4. I'm using a 2560 by 1440p monitor and it's an IPS monitor. I actually try and change as few settings as possible since I'm trying to make tutorials that is available for everyone. So under add-ons, I think I only use Node Wrangler and images to planes. And I also use the add-on uh, screencast keys, which is nice for just showing what, uh, what you're doing on your computer. Oh, I'm also probably using Render Street for some render farm stuff sometimes. Oh, key map. Here I do have some custom settings. One thing that is just super annoying if you're listening to music and you're playing an animation is that the media keys on your computer, like the pause and go forward and stuff like that, it just works with Blender, which <laughs> in my opinion, super annoying. I just want to listen to music and work in Blender at the same time. If I want to go next song, I don't want to skip the next keyframe. So to disable these keyframes, just go to key binding and search for media. Click this cross out button on the, the stuff that shows up here. That will get rid of all the play and pause interactions with Blender. So there's one more hotkey I've made, which is custom, which is change the pivot point. So let's say you have a cube and you want to rotate it around the 3D cursor like this. 
this change the pivot point to 3D cursor, I have this mapped to Q. I just want to keep my hand on the left side of the keyboard and the default hotkey for this was dot. Instead of having to move my hand over all the time, I just uh, changed it to um, Q, which is so much faster. So this is actually something I started doing just a few weeks ago, but I really like it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Under system, yeah, I, I mean, I have optics because I have an NVIDIA GPU, but under system, you can increase the memory cache limit, which I've increased. Oh yeah, this is really cool. Okay, so here I have opened a new project file because I just wanna show you something. Here is probably one of my favorite interactions with other programs with Blender. Because Blender's default animation player is really bad. It's no, that it doesn't even support filmic. It will mess up your aspect ratio if you try to scale it up. It's super slow. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to not use it. However, you can use whatever you want. So if you set it to custom and if you have DJV installed, so here you just point to wherever DJV is saved, like DJV.exe. Now you can just go render view animation and it will just open the animation in DJV. So this is like a recent project I had. And here you can see that this just, it works with the color space. If you have set it up using um, Blender's Okio file. So you can just basically preview your animations a lot easier, which I really love this. And then under asset libraries, I have my mechanical creature kit. Okay, so also when I'm rendering stuff in Blender, I'm rendering it as an EXR sequence. And then I'm using a compressed version, which uses the DWAB codec. So then, Let's just say that I have rendered out this animation now and I'm going to import this to DaVinci Resolve where I'll be doing sound design and I'll be exporting the entire video. I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio because there are some features that I'm using that is only available in the studio version. So today I'm just going to show you my entire workflow because I do use some proprietary or paid software usually. But when I'm making these tutorials on the main channel, I'm mostly focusing on this open source alternative to almost anything. Okay, so this is a mess of a project file. <laughs> Let me just make a new timeline, example timeline. And then I go to the media tab and then I just find where I have made my render. And if this doesn't show up as an image sequence, you can press these three dots and go frame display mode and set it to sequence. So then you can just right click, add it to media pool and then it will show up here. So here is the, I think it's this one, shot number one. Yeah, and here you can see you have the linear view. So we have to change this using the view transform. So let me just click and drag this into our example timeline. And of course it plays smoothly because DaVinci Resolve is magical. So now what I like to do is I like to right click, generate optimized media. So it will be much more responsive, especially if you're, if you're starting to cut between multiple EXR sequences. It's really heavy to work with real time EXR. In my tutorial on the EXR workflow, I usually go to this color tab and I go to nodes and I add two nodes and I do all the filming stuff in the nodes. But that will actually create some highlight artifacts for some reason. I think it has something to do with some sharpening resolve ads for the video export. By the way, this is getting super technical and I'm sorry, but yeah, it's probably valuable for some of you. So what I like to do is I like to go to fusion tab and uh, here you can uh, hold your mouse here and just go control tab and just search for Okio color space. And then this node can read Blender's Okio config file. So if you just go browse and then under Blender data files, color management, config.okio, open. And then you can set the source space to linear because we are in linear. And then we want the output space to be filmic sRGB. So now you can see this will look like it's supposed to be, but it's not real time anymore. So if you're playing this, it's going to lag a lot. Yeah, so it's not a real time workflow anymore, but it's much more stable and it looks better. So now what I like to do is I like to go to the color tab and now you can color grade this. I feel like Blender is sometimes a little bit dark in the highlights, so I like to just increase it a little bit. I like to increase the contrast just by a little bit like that. And then if I'm feeling fancy, I'll add a, a vignette just quickly like this and then invert it and make it darker. Now this is looking good. And then if you like, you can uh, find where it I mean, this has multiple crops in it, so I'll, I'll probably do like this and I'll grade each shot. So for sound design, I use Soundly. And when you're doing sound design, I can really recommend using Generate Optimized Media so the sound will sync with the EXR. And when you're doing sound design, you probably want to disable this so it will look bad, but it will be in real time. So let's open up Soundly. I like to make a folder that is called SFX. So now you can just search for like mechanical. And now let's... Yeah, I can't hear anything because I've disabled my sound <laughs> while I'm recording. Let's say you, you want this, you can just click and drag like this and you pull it into the timeline and boom, 
you have some sound effects. And then I do this a bunch of more times. And here, you, let's have a look at the proper timeline. Yeah, here you can see you got all these shots. And then there's a bunch of different music and sound design. I'll probably be doing a sound design tutorial again. But now you might be wondering, what's this? Why is there uh, something on top of this? This is the AI upscale version. So what I usually do is that I just export this as an um, DNX HR super high quality video. And then I'm going to upscale this using Video Enhance AI. So now let me just open Video Enhance AI. I haven't really made up my mind on this software yet. Its marketing is just so aggressive. I just, <laughs> that leaves a weird taste in my mouth. But uh, yeah, let's just click browse cinematic 2 HD. And then I just go set the output to two times upscale. So that will be 4K wide and then something different tall because it's a CinemaScope. And then I'm changing the encoder to ProRes HQ. Yeah, the default settings are actually really good. You just want it to be upscale and then go export. So when I've exported that, I import it back to DaVinci Resolve and then under effects, I like to use some film grain. So here you can see you have the effects panel. Here are my favorite effects. I just take the film grain and I smack it on there and I mostly use reverb and text and solid color. And this film grain is really cool. It's, let me just show you this. I'm not sure how this will show up in the video but this is a really powerful every frame i'm going through you get a new sort of layer of grain it looks really realistic it is one of the studio features of davinci resolve if you set it to linear light it will affect the shadows it just lays beautifully on top of everything and if you set it to overlay which is the default it will mostly impact the highlights or the colored mid-range areas which is probably closer to a film look so the the short version is if you want it to look like film I think you should set it to overlay. If you want it to look like a digital sensor, I think you should set it to linear light. Actually, let me show you what format I usually export videos in. I like to use QuickTime and I like to set it to H.264 and probably NVIDIA. And then the quality is just set to best. Yeah, and these are my audio settings. So that's just my default YouTube quality export settings. Oh, and one software I also use a lot is OBS. So. Yeah, here you can see, I'm in OBS. It's just a program to record your screen, do some live streaming, stuff like that. But that's more in the how to make tutorials. The point of this video was just to show you what workflow I'm using to um, make 3D animations. For, for example, the cinematics in my videos. So yeah, that's what's on my computer. I'm using Blender to do all my 3D animations and then I import them into DaVinci Resolve using OpenEXR with a DWAB compression. And then I add Soundly there and to make the Soundly situation works smoothly. I'm using proxy files, which is just right click, generate optimized media. And then I do a quick detour into Video Enhance AI to just get that 4K look on the HD footage. And then I'm taking that back to DaVinci Resolve, adding some subtle film grain, maybe some further color correction, I'm not sure, but I probably try and do that before I do the upscaling. Okay, so I'm not really sure what value is to watch this video for you, but for me, it was really fun to make. I'm also really much looking forward to watching this video in the future like in a few years, like what's changed, you know? Also, let me know in the comments if there's any particular stuff you wanna just see me do a deep dive into, which is probably not like a proper tutorial, but like just peek behind the curtain, you know, or some sort of explanation that could be helpful. That's it. Buy Blender merch in the official Blender store. You can support them like that. You can support me if you wanna buy my hoodie. Uh, you can also buy my poster. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and sell you any more stuff. Um, have a nice day. Thanks for watching.